Oh. Oh, fuck, man, it's recording again. Shit. How do I how do I edit this out? How do I mute myself? How do I refrain from never doing this again? Alexa, how do I delete my YouTube account? <laughs> Don't take my word for it. Don't take me seriously. I mean, just sit back, enjoy the gameplay, and listen to me spout some gibberish. Because I'm back once again with another Let's Play episode. <laughs> For this episode, I'm going to be playing as Android 17 from Dragon Ball Super, Super Saiyan Blue Goku, and Cooler. Three of probably the coolest fucking characters in all of Dragon Ball. So, you know, just like with the last couple episodes, I may, pay, I may be practiced like a couple minutes with 17 and Cooler. So, if I seem to pull it off flawlessly... Thanks. I'm glad you noticed that I'm still that I'm not a fucking novice to this. But I'm pretty sluggish with cooler. So hopefully that's not too underwhelming because like when I was practicing with cooler, I swear to god, this dude is almost as slow as Majin Buu. You know the, the big pink blue. <laughs> the big pink boo. Like, he's got some really cool fucking moves, but it feels like it takes a fucking eternity to pull him off, so. Meanwhile, with 17, I'm like fucking smooth as butter. So, you can already guess how this is gonna play out for the rest of the. for the rest of the episode. So, you know, I've had a variety of topics that I've brought up within the last couple episodes, like, you know, my creative roadblock, my fears with minimal effort sketch. Let's take this on a little more personal route. And I don't mean my personal life, I just mean like, you know, fucking hobbies and shit. So, I don't know if any of you guys ever went to concerts. Or like, you know, if you go to concerts. I don't know which... Which tents I'm supposed to use since we're in the middle of a pandemic and there's not really any going on. Even though there are some artist bands that are like fucking having shows in the middle of a pandemic, which is not helping our numbers. You fucking idiots. So... Hey, like, my very first concert was in 2011, November of 2011, when Avenged Sevenfold came to the James Brown Arena in Augusta, Georgia. I'm like, what the fuck, in Augusta, of all places? Because, you think about it, yes, at this, at this point in time, Augusta, Georgia is, like, blowing up. It's becoming, uh, I guess, a tourist favorite for a lot of... For a lot of people coming here to tour and whatnot, you know, people going on tourism and shit like that. But I guess the same could apply to artists performing here as well, because you know, after that, like there hasn't there hadn't been a major artist come to Augusta until a date of remembers tour last year. But I'll get more on that show in a little bit. So that was my first experience. I don't remember how much I spent on a floor ticket, but I imagine it wasn't that much because, like, nobody has shit going on at the James Brown Arena, so what could you possibly be spending in order to afford it? But that was such a weird fucking lineup because you had them headlining, and for their support, it was Hollywood Undead, Asking Alexandria, and Black Veil Brides. So, that's such a weird fucking lineup. <laughs> like, you know, you get, according to a lot of people, the cringiest band to start, which I've never seen the issue with them other than just how they dress, because a lot of people are like, oh, they're kiss ripoffs, but who cares? And then you've got the epitome of fucking Scene Kid City at the time, asking Alexandria. I say at the time because they're not worth a shit anymore. And then you've got this weird, like, I guess, I don't know how to describe Hollywood Undead, but they're basically if Linkin Park and Papa Roach had a horny love child, because I swear to God, I didn't think people still made, like, traditional new metal in this, well, actually in this past decade, because this is 2011, not 2020. So, 
And then you got Avenged Sevenfold, like, probably the most popular out of the scene at that time. I mean, they are still pretty popular, but, you know, if you reflect on their discography, it's nothing like how they started, so. That was a great experience for me, because that was my first ever concert. Like, I'm, like, the first three bands, I'm just like, what the fuck is going on? But then Sevenfold comes on, and I'm just living my fucking life to the fullest. Like, I and ever since then, I was like, yeah, I definitely got to do more concerts, because this is not enough. I can't just have one experience for my life. That's the only thing I reflect on. But that was definitely the only experience I had had for the next three years. I'm not counting the American Idiot musical, because, I mean, you know, you're going to see a fucking Broadway play. You're not going to mosh in the audience, because then the, then the fucking security is just going to think, what the fuck's wrong with you, so... Obviously, American Idiot, the musical, is out of the question. But that was... Three years later? Almost three years later? And then after that, I didn't go to another event until Marilyn Manson played at the Georgia Theater in Athens. Like, over a year later. I will be honest, that was such a weird tour because it's like, yeah, you're seeing Marilyn fucking Manson. But... Like, you know, him playing in a small-ass room, just... I don't know, it just felt off, because it's like, you know, this dude is a huge fucking deal. And he's playing in this tiny-ass room. <laughs> so I'm like, what what the fuck is going on? And not to mention that the, that the, the friend at the time that I went with was a fucking dick. Like, we were close in high school. But the day the show came, well, actually, before I get to that, like, we were close in high school, and, like, our dream was to fucking see Marilyn Manson in concert. Like, that was our thing in high school. And then, the day the show comes, he's not even in the audience half the fucking time, so I'm like, why the fuck did I spend two tickets? Why, why the fuck did I spend this money on two tickets? Like, no, 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 you know what? The fucking cost of the ticket doesn't matter. It's just, why the fuck are you not enjoying this with me? Why are you fucking off with some random guy you just met? Like, I don't know what the fuck you guys are doing. I'm pretty sure it's none of my business, but, you know, if you're not going to come enjoy this with me, maybe we shouldn't even fucking hang out anymore. That, that was my thought process. I didn't think of that at the time. It's like, I'm too fucking busy enjoying this, this concert. So, you know, that shit happens. Like, maybe two or three times throughout the show, he asked me to hold his beer. While he fucking goes and I don't know, I guess they were, I guess they're at a fucking hookah or some shit. And he would come back. He was like, "Yo, where's my beer?" And I'm like, "I'm sorry, am I your fucking babysitter? Cause I came here to see Marilyn Manson, not to fucking babysit you. You either enjoy the show with me, or I don't fucking see your sorry ass ever again." And of course, like you know, I was crashing with him that night, so I, I definitely couldn't say that. But I did say, "Dude, fuck your beer. I came to see Manson." <laughs> <laughs> and like this this whole time I'm like what the fuck happened to this guy because we were so close and he just ruined all of my expectations of our first concert together so then after that I clearly never hung out with him again because that's that's a really shitty fucking thing to do Somebody you claim that you're, that's your best friend, and you just dished them half half the time during the show. So <clears throat> after that day, I avoided him so much because you do not ruin a concert experience for me. I don't fucking care who you are. But yeah, later on that year was my first time at the Tabernacle. Was when Rise Against played. And Rise Against is another is another long time long time favorite of mine. I fucking love Rise Against. I saw them at the Tabernacle with Kill Switch Engage and Let Live. R.I.P. Let <laughs> R.I.P. Let Live, cause that band was fucking amazing. I mean, I do enjoy Fever Three Three Three, but it it just doesn't hit the same as Let Live. So, but that was a great experience. A couple friends that went with me. Different ones this time, not the same guy. Thank fuck. You know, those two. 
the two guys that I went with, they, they made the experience worth it, because, like, we, we were cool as fuck at the time. We still kind of are, but, you know, we just don't talk as much nowadays, but... <clears throat> That was, that was a really neat experience. I love the aesthetics of the tabernacle. Like, it legit feels like a tabernacle. But it's not. It's just a concert venue. But the aesthetics are so pleasing. I literally couldn't have asked for, you know, a better experience. So. And, like, it's fucking Rise Against. How can you not love this band? I fucking love those guys. <laughs> so. <clears throat> definitely the first time i'd ever gone to a concert in atlanta and if anyone's curious i'm two hours east of atlanta so you know if i make atlanta seem like a big deal that's because it is a big deal so great show great night because nothing compares to post-concert ihop and if anybody knows me personally i'm a sucker for ihop especially after a concert so then after that, I didn't have another experience until Fallout Boy in March of 2016. March 1st, 2016, actually. The first of the fucking month. Can you believe that shit? And holy shit. Ugh. I fucking love Fallout Boy. I would die for Pete Wentz. I would die for Patrick Stump. I fucking love those guys. <laughs> and the coolest part about it was that I had, I had a meet and greet with him as well a paid meet and greet because there's no fucking way they'll ever have like a meet and greet raffle or some shit that just wouldn't be fair so <clears throat> that was really fucking cool and you know the people the, the friend i was supposed to go with couldn't go so my mom ended up driving me because my parents are very very insecure about me going to shows by myself so that happened we um and, and she would go in the venue with me. And she even went to the meet and greet with me too. So this is actually a really funny story. So during the meet and greet, um, like we, we were up next, right? And I had two meet and greets because you know I was supposed to have somebody come with me. Right when we were going up, because my mom was with me, she fucking chickened out <laughs> of the photo because she's like, "Yo, I'm too fucking nervous for this." I'm like. Um, so am I, but I love these guys. I, I can't fucking not do this. <laughs> so, I, like, at the very last minute, I'm like, you seriously turned down a picture with Fall Out Boy. Why? Why would you do that? Oh, my God. Your Facebook would be, blow would be blowing up for days if you had actually done that. <laughs> Mine did. Like, oh, I had such a heart rush. Well, a heart and a head rush too but oh my god like that was literally one of my favorite experiences of that year was meeting them because i just fucking love those guys oh man and I, I, I did some i did some more meet and greets later that year like i met disturbed one of my childhood favorites because there's not a single there's not a single dragon ball z movie that doesn't have a disturbed song in the background <laughs> So that was my gateway. I met Disturbed, and then when Slipknot, Manson, and Of Mice toured, I met Manson that year. And then I met Corn later that year. Man, people were so fucking jealous of me, and I don't, I don't blame them because, you know, some people don't get the chance to do meet and greets, and I understand that completely. And, you know, in, in some instances that I've done these, I'm grateful to have friends join me for them and whatnot. Like, 2016, that's all That's all the people I met. 2017, I met... I met 30 Seconds to Mars. Yes, I still listen to them. Get fucked. And... All Time Low. Oh my god. All Time Low are my daddies. They, they put on such a good show that night, too. 2018, I think the only bands I met were Copper Roach and Beartooth. Copper Roach were probably some of the nicest people I'll ever meet. Like, if I ever do get that chance again, I'm not going to pass it up. Such cool, such generous people. So, that's that's definitely on the agenda in the future. <clears throat> oh, 
2017. I also met Motionless and White. Ah, oh, my favorite gothic metalcore band. I would die for Chris Motionless. Yeah, 2018 was just Papa Roach and Bare Teeth. I ended up seeing a day to remember, because that was who Papa Roach played with. Um, who else did I see? Paramore for the second time. June 2018. Oh my god. Don't get me started on Paramore, because I would fucking die for Haley Williams. And... Uh, who else did I go see? Oh yeah, I, I saw Hands Like Houses for the fourth time. If you guys know me, I fucking love Hands Like Houses. Obviously, you should know this if I have a Hands Like Houses tattoo. <laughs> but, this was def that was definitely one of my favorite experiences. Anytime I go see Hands Like Houses, it's, it's a great experience. I cannot say no to those guys. I fucking love them. In 2019, I went to Rockfest in Charleston, which um, Hailstorm and Underearth played, so you can tell that was an experience. And then, a day to remember the fourth and fifth time. I saw them twice last year. The fourth time, you know, when I mentioned earlier that they played at the Bell Auditorium, that was the worst fucking performance they had ever put on. I'm so fucking sorry. That that performance was terrible. But they made up for it later that year when I saw them in Simpsonville, South Carolina. And it was a much better lineup, and they were so much better too. And then I saw Wage War, and then I met Issues. That was the third time I'd, I, I saw Issues. And then this year I've only done Motionless, which is a fucking bummer. Because it's the only show I've done this year. Well, thanks for listening. Please subscribe because I'm doing more of these. Thank you!